Hey, welcome to Alumni Live. Uh, we're going to talk to another Grand Valley Film alumni. Uh, we've got Alfredo Peters, and uh, Alfredo Peters graduated in 2013, uh, uh, so just a, just a year after I did, and we're going to talk about uh, him creating his uh, his studio and also a, a YouTube page. It's really uh, it's really taken off, so I, I can't wait to hear what, what that's like. And uh, Alfredo, it's good to have you on. Randy, thank you for the lovely introduction, and uh, thank you for giving me pointers and tips when we were, well, I was interning at WGVU and uh, working alongside of you. I still use some of those fundamentals and principles that I've learned there today. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that really means a lot. I didn't expect that. Um, yes. I, and I think, you know, that's kind of like what, what these alumni lives are for is, you know, like, you know, taking those relationships that happened back in, um, you know, when we were in school or when we were interning and, you know, trying mm -hmm. to keep those going forward in our careers. Absolutely, man. I learned the, the fundamentals, I would say, um, were that's what stuck with me the most. I can't say that I gained a huge amount of experience working in film while I was on campus, mm -hmm. but the fundamentals really stuck with me. And uh, that's what it's all about when, when you're on the journey. Yeah. And we'll get into all that, but, but let's start off with what those fundamentals led you to. So, I mean, at this point, right, you've got higher faculty studios, you, you've, you know, created a studio, you've built a studio. Um, you've also uh, launched this YouTube channel, which, I, you know, I, I am just surprised every time I look at it, you've got more followers. Uh, tell me a little yeah. bit about all that. Man, it's a long, it's a long story leading up to me having a YouTube channel but I'll make it as short as possible. Uh, after I graduated, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, where I got the opportunity to work in film on set. Uh, I graduated, I just was like, you know what, I'm going back home. I really didn't have much going. I was just applying to like work at marketing and media companies. And my dad just called me one day and said, hey, like I live in Conyers, Georgia. They're shooting this show called The Originals, which is a spinoff of uh, Vampire Diaries right around the corner from my house. And he said, I talked to someone on set and um, the guy said, uh, have him give me a call next time he's in town. Well, I jumped on a plane and I called him and said, hey, I'm, I'm in town. Uh, how can I get on set? And uh, from there, I started actually working in film. Uh, I was a PA on set. And uh, long story short, I was, you know, a PA for a while and I decided that I wanted to build up a demo reel and next time I get on set I want to be much higher like I want to be in the camera department mm. so I went back home to Ohio long story short I freelanced for about eight years never went back and uh ended up opening a studio and uh from there within the studio the pandemic kind of hit we had not too much projects going coming into the studio. So we were like, you know what, let's start a podcast, which eventually turned into us doing reactions on YouTube. And here we are, 37,000 subscribers later. 37,000. Last time I checked, it was 35 and a half thousand. So it's, you know, it's going yeah. up daily. Wow. Yeah. Um, and and I think you know that that pandemic has had a lot of us had to you know shift and be creative. I mean, even mm -hmm. this show was you know because of because of the um, pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. But um, so so creating that studio, what was the original goal with that studio? So so my story goes like this: I when I came back to Ohio, I was always working outside of film, but I was doing it on the side. And I was doing weddings, commercials for small businesses, music videos, promo videos. I was even doing some photography. And then it got to a point where I made a name for myself and I was always getting contacted to do something. And I was like, you know what? If I get a little bit more organized and market myself, I can do this full time. And I just took the leap and said, you know what? I'm going to open a place to where people can come and get quality content. So the plan initially was with three other partners, two of them dropped off and uh, our goal was to open up a music recording studio slash photography video studio, an in-house place where people can come just create quality content. Well, we lost two partners and then like, as I said, the, the pandemic was going on. So, you know, we weren't able to book as much as we wanted inside of the studio and, um, uh, that was just the plan initially and it just kept changing it just we just had to adapt on the fly and it 
if it wasn't for like some really big projects that got booked, we probably wouldn't be able to be sitting here right now. But at the same time, opening allowed the bigger projects to come. So we just been um, talk like adjusting on the fly. And as we talked a little bit before the stream, um, it's about the adventure. You know, sometimes you just have to figure things out and go with the flow. And that's what it is when you're working in film and media. Like you can have the security of consistent projects once you build that up. But ultimately, it's just an adventure. You don't know what's coming next. And I think that's what keeps me going. Yeah, totally. And and I hear in your story a lot of um, what what happened with me. You know, I I also created a, a company with with a partner who who is now my wife, and mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's that that thing of like you, you do feel like it's an adventure. You do feel insecure, um, but somehow like those those jobs keep coming in. Somehow you know, it's I don't know if it's marketing or if it's you know relationships, but uh, you know how how have you been able to keep those jobs coming in? Well, I just do the best I can every time that I do a project. I, my goal is to make the next shoot my best shoot. Mm -hmm. And I always try to communicate effectively with who I'm working with. Uh, just, you know, treat it as a business. Mm -hmm. um, do right by people. Do your best. And I, I would say over 90 percent of the jobs I get are by referral. Like I, yeah. I, I did a great job the first time I, I actually. All right. So this is a tip for any any film alumni or anybody in, in video period. The first project that I've done in like that category of projects, I, I did it for free. Like my first wedding, I had no wedding experience. I did it for free. But from that wedding, somebody was like, you did an amazing job. I want to book you. How much is it? Uh, same with like um event like other events and commercials and and short films and music videos i started off doing a lot of free work and as i mentioned during the pandemic i booked a really big job but i got that from doing a very small job in the past with this person they reached out to the ceo of their company and rather than having their annual christmas party they we're doing the stream for uh, their company party and they booked 15 videos. And that was, that was just amazing. And it, it spurred from me doing a small project for them. And it just came back around. Same with another project in the same month. I did free work with the lady about five years ago. She called me, she needed about seven videos in one month. So it just comes full circle, you know, make sure you communicate with people effectively, make sure you, use good customer service and always put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. I, I know something, especially in the beginning of, of our company, something that we struggled with was deciding what that value was for us, right? Like how much are we worth people? You know, there's always that standoff of, you know, like yeah. how much are you going to charge? How much is your mm -hmm. budget? You know, it's kind of like, so, um, you know, for us, like we kind of decided what we wanted to make hourly and kind of worked back from there. What was your process, you know, from moving from uh, free work into getting paid? How did you end up deciding what your value was? So I got feedback from other people who were doing this type of work. And it's, it's something that I, I struggle with up until recently was how do I price this stuff? You know, and ultimately I kind of broke it down hourly, kind of like you did. And um, you have to uh, have the ability to tell people no sometimes when they can't afford your services because in turn, the people who can afford it will pay and you won't lose out on losing those jobs because you're busy. So uh, I think you have to decide how much you're worth and um, provide value to the client. Uh, one thing that I did run into was I, were, I was producing like commercial content for uh, businesses and I, I kind of was upset because they didn't know how to market it. So here you are, you're paying me a pretty, pretty good price for um, a video and then you post it on social media, it gets one or two likes. So I wanted to complement that with a strategy. So I added like strategy to my pricing. And that's another tip that you can use to, you know, pr structure, add more valuable, add more value to what you're, you're producing. 
Sure. And, and I'd imagine too, like having your YouTube channel has kind of, you know, put some weight behind that strategy because you've really, you know, been able to grow your social media presence, you know, like, like we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, in addition to, to balancing, you know, kind of your, your YouTube stuff, your, your studio stuff, you, you've also, uh, you've, you've got a family life, right? You've got a, a four-year-old daughter. Um, yeah. What uh, what struggles or strategies have you had in, in balancing home life, work life, you know, studio life, family life? Yeah, that's that's something I am still figuring out. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, my daughter's four years old. Her name is Layla. She's very beautiful. And she's been in here working shifts with me. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's hard to balance at times because she she can only sit still for so long. She wants to play. Mm -hmm. And many times have we been recording YouTube videos. Luckily, they're not that serious, but she'll walk right in the shot and say, Dad, I'm hungry. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, it's just about coming up with a system because it was none of this was anticipated. You know, we we woke up to 200 subscribers after our first video and we were like, man, that's awesome. Like after one video. Yeah. I was like, let's do it again. <laughs> and then we just kept going and going and adding more value. It just started us started off as us sitting right here at this desk and then we added lighting and then we added another camera angle and then we started taking suggestions and then we added uh we created a discord which is like another chat room type program and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and so the balance is something that i have to figure out almost weekly yeah. <laughs> you know when what when will i have her what will what will we be doing um, when will I need a sitter? Because sometimes I'll react from nine to five or, you know, be working on my YouTube strategy, take a little break. And then I'm still working after that editing projects that I'm shooting for other people. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something that's a day by day process, you know, just figuring sure. it out. And, and that's something that I've had to learn myself too. I, you know, in, in the music we listen to and in the, um, you know, just kind of the, the world we go in, you know, as, as driven people, I think we hear a lot of like, you know, you, you've, you've got to be on all the time, right. You've got, you know, every second, you know, you're on your grind. Um, yeah. and so it's something that I've had to, you know, learn as, as I'm, you know, building my, my family here and, and, you know, kind of learning about stuff is, you know, you've got to build that grind, but you've also got to still have, you know, the, the you know your time and your family you can't just be absent all the time you know that is very very mm -hmm. very key and important man. especially we're getting older we graduated right. in 2012 and 2013 it keeps uh, getting farther and farther away huh? right right we have more <laughs> adult responsibilities and it, it slowly our lives slowly become less about us it becomes about our families and you know uplifting the next generation so yeah thank you for that uh i want i got a question for you Oh, all right. Who, who does your editing? Do, are you an editor or, or how does, how does that work? Uh, yeah. So, so at, um, at our company at uh, wrinkle creative, uh, we, uh, we do shoot and edit everything ourselves. Um, so, yeah. um, so, uh, Mallory and I will go out and we'll film, you know, as a two person group, sometimes we'll freelance mm -hmm. a third person in, and then usually I'll take all that back and, um, be editing that, uh, on our own, um, for our TV show, I, I co-edit with, uh, uh, my co-director, Zach Lanuski. So, um, we, we do kind of, you know, share it on the bigger projects, but yeah, like usually we're doing, um, you know, these kind of smaller fundraising type things, which, you know, we keep our crew small so we can keep the prices down for people. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And editing is something that is very time consuming for one. Yeah. And for me, I kind of, like put myself in a box because I'm really, really good at editing, but I just don't like to do it. And, right. And then clients like expect this great quality editing. So right now I'm in the process of, of trying to like outsource some of my editing, but so finding somebody I can trust. Sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, with, with the digital age too, it's gotten a lot easier to, uh, you know, to find somebody even in a different city. So they don't have to be in Middletown, Ohio with you, you know, you could, you know, find another uh, alumni who, uh, is able to edit, you know, from a distance, mm -hmm. ship them off the footage, um, yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if anybody's watching this at grand Valley, we're looking for an editor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we need a, a, the, the soundboard hit the plug button, right? Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, I, so the higher faculty, you've got mm -hmm. this uh, YouTube channel. It's, it's growing big. It sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, you put one video up 20,000 uh, subscribers, not even 20,000 views, 20,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Um, what, so what even are these videos about? 
okay well one video 200 subscribers that's oh, what sorry, 200. So, two, so yeah we 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 um all right so here's the situation uh we started a podcast like local people coming in to our studio and we did the first episode it was one a good friend of mine he went to the nba vince edwards played for the houston rockets we were setting up for our podcast while he was in here for about an hour and i said you know what that's very rude and uh, next time we have to be more prepared. Now, luckily he's a close friend, like a brother to me. So he wasn't really upset about it, but I said, next time somebody comes in, we need to be prepared. We need to figure out how to work this switcher. We got, we got multiple angles, as you can see. Um, so my partner was like, you know what? We, we, we thought about doing reactions, but he was like, you know what? Let's, let's figure out how to use this equipment so we can do our podcast, which will in turn be marketing for this place. Um, so he did a reaction video one day. Uh, I was kind of busy editing. I'm like not paying attention. His computer couldn't handle it. So I think the next day or so, we're like, let's let's try it again to get a, a feel for this equipment. So I jump into the reaction and we did it locally live on Facebook. Uh, just had artists send us music and we listened to it. And look, like we were like, let's do this on YouTube. So I picked the song. Uh, one day I was in the shower listening to music as I always do and I heard this song kind of I was jamming out and I looked at the artist like who's this and I'm like wait wait they're not speaking English and I heard that song one time so I was like let's let's put this on YouTube we don't know the language uh, it's a very fun song so we did a reaction to it and like I said we woke up to like two two or three hundred new subscribers and they made a bunch of suggestions and we were like, okay, let's do it again. And then it got to a point where we started doing five videos a day. I figured out how to load an intro, record the video, put an outro. So we didn't have to do any editing. So as long as we had time, we could do reactions. And it got to a point where we were gaining a thousand subscribers a day. And we complimented our YouTube channel with the discord, which is like a chat room type of community. And people kept growing and chatting amongst each other and becoming friends through us. And then from there, we started a Patreon, which is a way that people can pay and support your YouTube channel. And that has grown over a thousand plus people monthly. And it's just been a tremendous, tremendous journey and experience. And it just all kind of happened off us trying to test our equipment, which right. is crazy. And that, <laughs> and that song, it was, it was in Korean, right? That ended up being the language. And so you've become yes. this huge K-pop channel. Like you're reacting yeah. to K-pop. What, uh, sure. so uh, what is K-pop? What artists are you listening to? Uh, you know, where can people find yeah. this stuff? So of course you can type in higher faculty on YouTube, but K-pop is Korean pop music. And it's kind of just an overarching title for it. It's more than just pop music. You get R&B, you get hip hop. They even have some ballads and country style music within that genre. But we've been listening to some of the most popular artists like BTS. They were na they were um, nominated for a Grammy this year. I don't know if you watched the Grammys, but BTS actually performed at the Grammys. It was the first time a Korean artist did that. And uh, NCT and uh exo or some of our favorites but there's so many artists and and it's a, a huge playing field and we react to some of their concerts they do it a lot bigger than america surprise <laughs> like i'm su i'm super surprised like there are concerts with a hundred thousand people in there and they're all going crazy and people from all over the world travel to watch these concerts and it actually boosts the korean economy mm, wow so it's these, got that much impact huh yeah so these these uh record labels and entertainment companies are, are dumping big budgets into their productions and music video. And the quality of music is just outstanding because if it's affecting the country's economy, then they should invest in it. Mm -hmm. So it's been an amazing journey and I, I just, I just truly enjoy it now. And I want to learn Korean. <laughs> right. So that, that's the next, so you're, you're all in, huh? Just from hearing that once in the shower. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, so I had watched, you know, gone through a couple of your videos, get, getting ready for this. And, you know, at first I was like K-pop, like I, I don't know BTS, like I wasn't like, you know, a, a fan of, of K-pop going into this mm -hmm. and, you know, I probably wouldn't have looked it up otherwise, but then like 
being alongside it, like watching you guys react to it. Like mm -hmm. I, I understood the music. Like I was, you know, I felt like I was hanging out with you as, as you and your co-hosts were all, you know, yeah. watching along with it, reacting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how, tell me about like reaction videos. It's a whole genre on YouTube. What, um, you know, what makes the reaction videos? So I'm not like well versed in this. <laughs> I just saw that people do this and um a friend of mine was doing it as well and she had like over a hundred thousand subscribers and i didn't understand it and my goal when when i opened my studio was to bring her in and take her out of her room and doing this at home and give her a professional setup you know, my goal was to help other people start YouTube channels. And if you want, just come in here to my studio. You can pay a monthly fee and just create. That was our business model initially. But we started to do it for ourselves and we started growing. So like with our channel, uh, I would say our re what separates us from other like reaction channels is it, it's pretty much like a podcast. Like, yeah, we'll listen to the song, but I give my input as a filmmaker on the music video and my partner who reacts with me gives his input as an artist and we just talk about like our life's journey and experience with the music so of course you can sit and enjoy the music but you can also have a good, good conversation with us and then from there we even added other elements like a dj coming in and mixing this genre of music and he throws in some of the music that he likes which naturally is like american hip-hop and r&b and some of these people say we haven't heard anything like this you know you're we're bringing music across the world to people who have never experienced it in this way uh so we're just adding new things to our channel and being that like i never we never planned it we kind of fell down the rabbit hole and lost track of what we really want to do which is combine education and entertainment Mm -hmm. So we do want to teach people the, the fundamentals of shooting good video and, and, and being an artist and how to make money as a filmmaker. So we're going to complement the reaction videos with content of our own. Yeah, well, and I can say too that you know, as far as education goes, I mean, I learned about K-pop. Like, I didn't know anything about Korean culture going in, and yes. uh, it's it's already working. Yeah, um, for sure. And it's it's also you know it's not like you're you're just making these videos and um, you know it's it also brings back some money to you right I, I noticed that you say you you're part of affiliate programs and some of their can you talk about monetizing YouTube videos and a little bit about uh, you know if if students want to start a channel what what that might look like yeah so um, YouTube has a partner program uh, in order to make money and get paid at, from ad revenue from YouTube, you have to meet the, the minimum requirements. And once you do, you have to apply to become a partner. So I believe that's like a thousand subscribers and maybe 4,000 watch hours, mm -hmm. which it sounds like a lot, but we hit that relatively quickly. Now, I wow. wouldn't I wouldn't expect everybody to grow the, the way we've grown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully you can, but I, the reason I'm, I mention that is don't be intimidated by the numbers. You can do it. Before we started it, my goal was to make 52 YouTube videos this year and gain 10,000 subscribers. So we had the intent going in. We just didn't know it would take off that fast. Yeah. Um, so um, to let you know about monetization. So when you react, do reactions, you're listening to copyrighted material. So when you upload the video and with the music playing in the background, you're going to get a copyright um, claim on the music, which mm. isn't a bad thing. YouTube just says you don't own the rights to this music. Okay. If you, if you get a, a hundred thousand views, that's a hundred thousand streams for the artist. So that revenue from the ad goes to the artist. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So we had to figure out a way, how do we monetize this thing? And I heard a little bit about Patreon, but I wasn't too familiar. We started a Patreon, which um, is very popular amongst reactors because our fans know that we can't monetize these videos. Mm. So they were expecting it. They were like, oh, I guess we can get 
uh, these type of videos once they make a Patreon. And we were like reading comments and saying that like, oh, I guess we need to make a Patreon. They're expecting us to have one. So we started a Patreon, which is like um, people subscribe to you kind of like Netflix. We put private videos in there and they pay a monthly fee to watch them. So when you react to like concerts, a lot of this, some of these things get blocked completely off of YouTube. So we post them in our Patreon for people to watch privately and you can set prices any, any way you want them. So we got like a $3 tier, a $5, a 20, a 50, a hundred, $150. And they all come with perks. And surprisingly, you know, we we're we're going to hit about 1500 people in our Patreon paying us per month. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Wow. And I just say that to inspire anybody else looking for ways to monetize their own content. So. Right. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, it sounds like you, you really took the effort to learn about all this stuff, right? You know, like you're learning about uh, the, the things that come in from, you know, like the law side of it, right? So who owns the music? You're, you're learning about the production things, right? So putting up different, uh, you know, all the equipment you've got, leveling that up all the time. Um, yeah. you know, it sounds like you're just constantly learning, always mm -hmm. like, putting new stuff into it. Yeah, it's been a learning experience. And I'll say like all of the knowledge that I've accumulated even starting back in high school because I went to like a vocational school where I kind of learned the fundamentals of broadcasting uh, all the way through me interning at WGVU. I knew the importance of a switcher. I have a switcher right here in front of me. Oh, camera two is dead. But, <laughs> you know, I learned about proper lighting, proper sound, and I just applied it to our reaction videos. A lot of, when you watch people doing this, they're sitting in the room. They don't have a microphone. There's mm -hmm. no lighting. The sound isn't good. But I said, you know what? If we're going to do this, let's do it properly. Mm -hmm. So I treated our our reaction as a show. I made an intro on a an After Effects. You know, I, I knew I know what production value looks like. Yeah. And just an aside real quick, I do love that intro. Like I saw it like that, mm -hmm. that gets, it gets you hype every time. Like I, I never skipped yeah. it. I just watch it every time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I think, oh, there's the intro right there. Uh, wow. I just, I'm speechless. Shout out to Katie. the production. <laughs> yeah. That's our intro. So the little things I would say, that's what you pick up as a film student. You understand what makes something quality you understand the importance of taking the time to add a little production value mm -hmm. uh, when we started i made the intro and then i flashed our instagrams on the screen i made sure the sound was correct and we had got a mixer an audio mixer so I'm, i got the levels going mm -hmm. so i just essentially made a mini version of a production studio and i believe that is one of the reasons why we were able to grow so fast because people were like, man, they got a fish tank in the back. They've got lighting. They've got microphones. It sounds good on top of us having the personalities for it, which it just all kind of clicked at once. Right. And, and I do think too, you know, so when we were in school, right, you know, 10, 10 plus years ago, we, yeah. uh, you know, it was a, it was a different world, right? We were learning SD things. We were on tape. We were, um, you know, editing in, in different, you know, totally different editing programs that are out now. Yeah. Um, but like, like you're saying those fundamentals, you know, it, you know, even though it's 4k now, like it's not even HD anymore, it's 4k, it's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, multiple cameras live, right? We didn't, you know, internet was very different when we were young, but those fundamentals of storytelling of quality video, all of that, you know, it, it does come through. And I, I really, uh, you know, I, I see that quality. I, I like it. It's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And yeah. it's, it's whenever you can pick up little nuggets in, in film, because I remember learning in film class about cinematography, and that's still to this day is one of my passions and interests. And when you learn some of the fundamentals and you can you learn how to pull them off effectively, mm -hmm. it, it just adds a little bit more to your work it's to where somebody who doesn't know anything about it says they know what they're doing. Sure. And even though technology doesn't change or technology changes, light doesn't change, right? Like it's always going to bounce in the same way. It's always going to shadow in the same way. Exactly. Yeah, for exactly. Sure. Uh, you mentioned for your sure. co-host for a second there. Uh, and mm -hmm. you guys do have, you have great rapport. So were those people mm -hmm. you knew before this or, or how, who are your co-hosts and, and how'd you bring them in? My co-host is my partner, uh, Larry Carter. 
A.K.L. L.C. You heard he's a great friend of mine. We grew up in Middletown, Ohio together. We played football together. He was the captain of the football team. He's two years older than me. I was a sophomore on varsity playing football and we graduated and, you know, he moved to Indiana. I was here in Ohio making a name for myself, shooting music videos, and he makes Christian hip hop music. So he reached out to me as the guy from his hometown, like that does videos to say, Hey, I want to start taking this artistry more serious. I want, I want you to do my music videos. So for a while he was driving back and forth from Ohio, from Indiana to Ohio, we would do a music video and then he'd go back. And then years later he, you know, moved back to Ohio and um, we were coming up with a plan to like, you know, invest in each other just because I believe in in his sound and music. He believes in my ability to shoot videos. We were like, let's come together and start something. So it started off as us kind of doing videos. And I went through like a huge identity crisis and I kind of shut everything down. You know, I was shooting videos for a while. It wasn't, everything hasn't been always easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, there was a point in time where I wanted to shut it down. I actually sold my gear, got rid of my camera and said, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to do something else, you know? And fast forward, we come back together and uh, I start higher faculty. You know, he's right alongside with me. And, you know, we just developed the bond and relationship to where, you know, we're just growing this thing as big as we can together. So that's our story. Right. And, and that bond really does come through on, on camera. You know, I, I think as an audience, we feel like we're hanging out with, with you as you're up there. Um, mm -hmm. Here's some behind the scenes of your uh, of your studio there building it. Um, yeah, the, yeah. The the name higher faculty. Um, mm -hmm. So does that uh, where does that come from? What does that mean? So I was working a lot of regular jobs while doing video on the side. I had a job that allowed me to listen to a lot of music and stuff in my headphones while I was working. Uh, I was started to listen after I've listened to every song that I've ever heard. Uh, uh, every song that I've ever liked in my 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 Spotify and Apple Music library i was like you know what something's got to change like i wasn't i feel like i wasn't made for a regular job like i can be a great employee for about six months and then i started losing focus and motivation and i i've always been kind of like a go against the grain guy so i was like you know what let me start listening to personal development uh there's a personal development coach called bob proctor and bob proctor tries to introduce you to the highest side of yourself, you know, to it's like personal em empowerment. And one of the concepts he talks about as, are your higher faculties. You have six of them. Um, imagination, perception, uh, intuition, willpower, memory, and reasoning. And you can go through and study each one of the higher faculties because that's a part, that's the non-physical part of, of yourself as a human being. And I really drew a lot of inspiration from those teachings to start believing in myself more. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it was those teachings that propelled me to eventually leave my regular job and start doing what I want for a living. Wow. And the name higher faculty just is kind of like a play on words. Like you do have the higher faculties, but as faculties, we are responsible for teaching and we just combine that together and that's where the name comes from wow and I, I imagine it wasn't you know just a you know you turn the you turn the switch on and all of a sudden you started the company uh mm -hmm. you know there, there must have you, even though you were excited for it i'd imagine you probably had some some nervousness you were probably you know kind mm -hmm. of worried about how to start this thing if it was going to work um mm -hmm. what uh you know how how long did that process take and and what um what got you through it to where you are now i would say it was about eight years of just freelancing mm -hmm. and it could have been a lot sooner if I had the the strategy and belief. So I, 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 like I said, I started off doing free work and then it got to a point where I would get contacted almost like almost daily. Like sometimes like during peak season of people wanting to shoot, like in the summer and spring, um, I would just get hit up all the time. Like, Hey, you know, I need this type of video. I need this type of video. 
and I really lacked the structure because I was kind of just saying yes to everything. You sure you need I to, did that too? <laughs> yeah, you you just kind of find an, a a niche like something that you're really good at or you really like to enjoy to shoot, mm -hmm. and just double down on that. Right. Um. But after after about eight years to kind of do it on the side, I was like, you know what? I can really do this. Mm -hmm. Like I I have a lot of contacts. And I never really marketed myself, which mm -hmm. is kind of something I regret, but it kind of worked out because it was all organic. Everybody's like, you know what? You need to hit up Alfredo. He does great video work. And that's got to feel good, you know, hearing that after, you know, not being sure for so long. Like that, that must yeah. have really meant something. Yeah, it did. And, and I just said, you know what? I'm going for it. Um, I had saved up a little bit and I was like, you know what? I'm going to open this studio. Whatever happens, happens. And, I don't know if it was a, a bad decision or a great decision. It was during the heart of the pandemic. Sure. I said, I can't do this. I have to get out. Like imagine being inside and I'm a free spirit. I like to be out and about in the pandemic, like doubled that. Like mm -hmm. I, now I'm in the house. I'm, and when I'm not in the house, I'm at my job and I'm just not happy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? You only live once. If I fail, I fail, but at least I tried. And, Ultimately, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to take the leap. I'm going to actively reach out to somebody who I've actively reach out to some of the people I've done work with in the past. I'm just going to accept every project, which turned into a frenzy of me just shooting and running around shooting, editing. The cycle was just vicious. But now I'm kind of narrowing down and picking and choosing on what projects that I want to take on because I, I am able to generate a stream of income from YouTube. So I'm I'm kind of transitioning into only doing the projects that I want to do. Yeah, which uh, that, you know, we kind of went through a similar journey with our company too, where at the beginning we we started with, you know, just kind of scattershot of like, we're doing photography, we're doing video, we're doing broadcasts, we're doing, you know, 360 video popped up. So we started doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you know, it was only in the, in the last, like maybe year or two where we really started to say, okay, like we know what we don't enjoy, right? We don't enjoy doing this stuff. So we're just not going to advertise that anymore. We don't, you know, think that we're all that good at doing this kind of stuff. So we're not going to do that. And we really honed in now on, on knowing who we are as, as filmmakers. But I also think that moment of saying yes to everything, like did let us know what our identity is. Yes. Uh, so, so I guess, you know, off of that, you know, we, we've got a question here. So what, what do you see as coming next? Right. So now you've kind of learned who you are. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you know where you've come from, you know what you like, you don't like, uh, what mm -hmm. do you want to do next? What's next is do doing a lot of purpose driven content. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make our own content to complement the reactions on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So short films, uh, music videos, my partner makes music. I love shooting music videos. I, I, I love it, especially when it's music I, I can enjoy and share with my family and friends. Um, yeah, I just want to create content that inspires and teaches. So we do want to kind of do some teaching how to like light properly, sound, sound and cinematography, but also show people that you can be creative for a living. You can create your own short films and skits and shows. So I just want to be a, a, a living, a walking testimony of you being able to be a full time filmmaker. So look for a lot of creative content on our channel outside of reactions, because that's what's coming next. I'm freeing up a lot of my time doing the random projects to do more in-house projects. Man, after hearing that, like I'm inspired, like let's go create something. That feels, that feels great. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's my goal and my mission. And that's the purpose of higher faculty. And as long as I'm alive, I'm living that purpose. That's beautiful. Well, uh, thanks for coming on and uh, thanks for, for sharing your stories and your tips. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really enjoyed catching up with you. Yeah, it was, it's a pleasure. And next time I'm up in, uh, on the west side of Michigan, I'll reach out to you. Maybe we can get some coffee or something. And uh, I look forward to getting back on campus and seeing what's going on. Every time I peek at the campus, you guys add 10 new buildings and all kind of stuff that wasn't there when I was there. So, yeah. It's I getting big. Pretty soon they'll it. have the Peters building up there, right? And kids will learn about studio stuff. Man, I'll have to donate 1.5 million or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your way. Right, right, right. But thank you guys for having me. It's been a uh, an amazing experience. 
and uh, I look forward to seeing what 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 comes out of the film film program, like other filmmakers and content. So thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. And, and thanks, everybody, for, for watching. Uh, if you uh, want to follow uh, Alfredo, you can check out uh, Higher Faculty on, on his website, his YouTube, uh, social media all across the board. Um, we're Alumni Live, so check us out on uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh, subscribe if you liked it. Thanks so much.